fortune be on your side when you land on this vast unknown shore to breathe the air under a foreign sky when your skills are challenged once more you will fly let's imagine that we can wind the clock back 60 years to christmas eve december 24 1948 it was the commencement of the age of the great silver wings that rested on the clarence it was the age of the flying boat a commercial airline had for the first time arrived in town but that wasn't the first time a flying boat alighted on the clarence In August 1936, a flying boat arrived unannounced, much to the astonishment of Grafton locals who turned up to view this amazing aircraft. And it was a very long way from home for a single-engine aeroplane. Fortunately, a young Grafton photographer, Owen H. Sanders, captured the moment on its arrival on the Clarence River. The odd-looking flying machine was built like a boat with its pointy nose hull. It had stabilizing floats, retractable wheels, and was powered by a Pratt & Whitney R985 300 horsepower WASP engine. I'm standing here on a little wharf on the Clarence River at Grafton. And behind me are the tranquil waters where once, beginning in 1948, huge Sunderland flying boats used to take off on a flight to Sydney. Within a couple of hours, the Catalina VH ASA was over Grafton, striding along with those seven league boots. Taylor was keen to make an impressive landing on that day, as many locals had gone down to the river to see the Catalina land. As the aircraft eased into the descent, Taylor kept a ruffle of power on with a speed of 75 knots. The air was uncertain on that day, so a little bit of power was essential. The aircraft descended at a rate of 100 feet per minute, then 50 feet. And suddenly, she was on the water, which hissed like steam escaping at high pressure as the step cut in. The Solons could handle a crew of seven and could travel at a maximum speed of 273 miles per hour, or 440 kilometers per hour. Catching the flying boat to Sydney was, by today's standards, a very simplistic affair. There were no hassles like those of today at modern airports. It was virtually a case of walk on and walk off. To join a flying boat it was almost like going on board a ship to start with and then, then you took to the air and uh, it was a very exciting thing to do, I think, for passengers. Monkton initially applied for a licence to operate his airline to Lord Howe Island and Grafton which was approved. Take time to reflect. Stroll down to the river end of Prince Street. Only the memories remain. The old wharf is gone and has been replaced by another, a little to the right of the original. The bright orange buoys were removed long ago. Even the sign Grafton Water Airport, which remained for many years, has mysteriously disappeared, probably in the late 1980s. However, memories linger of the ships that flew. The blasting sound of the big radial engines. And if you think hard enough and use your imagination, you'll see these great ships of the air that once passed this way. But it was an exciting chapter in my life. And I'm glad that I lived through that. Wonderful. Wonderful for me and wonderful for Grafton. <laughs>